Drinking down that syrup, we switched out a honey frame. We dropped in an empty frame the other day. That transfers syrup from the feeder into the honey frame is important because it keeps the bees full, their stomachs full as they're transferring that syrup. So they more apt to build wax. have it full of syrup. Doesn't take them long. We'll be transferring that out shortly. So this will be it for the builder. This is the last of the graft this time around. These cells will be used up on July 1st. And what do we have? Nice looking cells. One blank, two blanks, three, four, four blanks. But otherwise, they look pretty good, consistent with their jelly. They could use a little bit more jelly. We've put these builders to a lot of work. for the amount of bees in there. So we're gonna be shutting them down. But there's three frames of brood in there that has just emerged over the last week. So they have lots of young bees in there. This builder, it looks a little better, filling more jelly in these cups. Look at that. One miss, two misses, so that's pretty good. Nicely drawn with wax, could use a little more jelly though. We are kind of in a dearth right now, they're just feeding on pollen. I could probably give them a pollen frame. What do they have in here? I have pollen in here, but got some young bees still emerging. All stored pollen in there too. <clears throat> they do have some pollen at hand. eating the patty.
little more consistent with the jelly in the cups. One, one miss on this one. Nice looking cells. I think we're gonna add a pulling frame to them tomorrow. What should I say this morning? I haven't been speaking into this camera for a little while. Just so super focused on everything I'm trying to do. And the compounding work that the association has layered on to me. Our industry has fallen into a little bit of a hardship with our producers experiencing a lot of loss. So I've had to direct a tremendous amount of, of my time towards that issue. I'm not complaining. I've signed up for it. Boy, but is it ever challenging. This is serious business. This isn't the regular, you know, happy-go-lucky association work. This is guys' livelihoods. This is looking for solutions. This is how can we as an association best represent our membership to the government to find solutions to provide support and help to move forward. So that's layered a lot of stress and work on to me. But the work on the farm continues and things I think I've been seeing the hive turn the corner for the last week, week and a half, and I think that is true. They are working up into that second box. Quite nicely. Not storing any nectar yet. This time of year, typically we are shaking the bees down into the bottom box to separate, segregate that queen down the bottom because we have an inflow of canola honey, alfalfa honey. But we don't have that yet. Alfalfa is probably two weeks back yet. Uh, clover is just poking through canola. We have one field that's just come into bloom, but that's the only field in the countryside that's blooming. So we might have to manage just around that field a little bit. But for the most part, I'm seeing things being at least, well, four weeks might be a little bit of a stretch now. Things are starting to catch up. We're looking at least three weeks behind. So I'm just going to watch how all that timing interacts with the surge of workers I'm about to get from high school. And I like to take a week off. So, you know, go to Lake, take some time to myself, my family. So all this work preparing for the honey flow uh, all the dynamics are different i'm not sure how to uh, greet it and manage it accordingly so the only thing i can do is just manage it day by day manage the way i see things and that's three weeks behind which means by the time i get back from the lake is when we'll start moving those queens to the bottom box and start stacking these hives up for the honey flow that's all there is to it so for this last uh four or five days I've taken the crew around and um, and we're identifying the smaller colonies I'm assessing the colonies that haven't grown have maybe fallen back a bit and then we're digging down into them to see what's going on and by doing that we identify the hives that are failing if the nest looks really tough we put a tag up on top here and we identify them as being a requeen candidate. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm pulling all these colonies that we have marked as failures. And obviously they're not dead. So we're not taking them as losses. We're just going to call them out and follow through with our nuke program. We're going to kill the queen. We have a batch of queens coming ready tomorrow. So we'll go through, kill the queen, drop a cell into these, and then get them going again. Then I'm going to follow through all these empty spots i'm going to drop a bunch of my nukes into those places just to revive that spot nice and fresh nice and productive and jumpstart that well, you know just kind of inject 
vigor and production into this yard. Keep every place in this operation producing honey. Well, the guys are doing something useful in the yards today. I'm pissing around playing musical trailers. So I spent the last two hours trying to get that roofer unit going. Finally called my brother over, 10 minutes, pow. Just got the magic mechanical touch. And currently what I'm doing is I'm freezing out that trailer because I have a resident wax moth problem. It's, well, it's been such a windy spring, you'd think some of those little bats would be flying up, but the wax moth infestation is far enough along in my dead old equipment. I think as resident wax moths within the comb that probably, you know, made it through winter in my winter shed and then ended up into my uh, storage shed as we're cleaning out the frames and now I'm seeing it expressed. I'm seeing a little bit of damage, not much. I'm just seeing the initial signs of it. So I'm not seeing much, I'm just seeing the initial stages of the wax moth damage, just here and there in frames, and seeing the greater wax moth flying around. But I'm not gonna be able to cycle that equipment into my nukes. Once these nukes get mated, I'm gonna switch them into 10 frame deeps so I can use all my leftover brood comb and just let the bees take care of the issue. But that's not gonna be for another three weeks or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch this trailer into that position over there. That one's full of barrels, which is gonna make my job a little more time consuming. But I'm gonna take some barrels out of the back, put the comb in there and let it freeze out. It's gonna take a hell of a long time to freeze out because it's full of bloody barrels. But I'm just going to let her freeze it out, even if it takes me a week, just to help preserve that comb so then I can then cycle it in and have the bees take care of the issue. 